What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be talking about the mistakes that I have made uh, that have cost me well over $300,000 in potential revenue um, that I missed out on. So these mistakes are obviously very costly and um, I hope that this video helps you to prevent making them and um, it just gets you in the right mind state whether you're getting into dropshipping or you've been into it for a little while now. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. <laughs> All right, so essentially what this video boils down to is not testing products effectively. And um, there's two main reasons why I was not testing your products like effectively. Um, one of those is that I wasn't um, trusting my gut. Like I kind of knew what I was supposed to do, but I just wasn't going with what my gut said. And also I was just afraid to lose money. Um, and that's really understandable, especially when you don't have much money to lose. Um, but it's definitely a very counterproductive mindset. So I'm going to talk about two specific examples of eight figure products that I missed out on. And um, that cost me well, well in excess of $300,000. I know people that literally made six figures on these products. I'm sure people made seven figures on these products. And I know that I could have been one of those people too. But um, yeah, so without further ado, let's kind of break down um, just those two specific examples and um, why I lost so much money. All right, so I probably can name a dozen products off the top of my head um, that I have missed out on because of these mistakes. But one of the big ones that comes to mind is AirPods. Now, as a lot of you may know, this is like, this was a huge, huge, huge product. I know some guy that did like six figures in a day with AirPods, which is absolutely crazy. But anyway, um, so basically I started selling AirPods in December of 2017. I basically had a whole store that was themed around like Apple, iPhone accessories, stuff like that. And um, I thought AirPods would work because it was a pretty new product, meaning Apple had just started kind of selling them. And um, I, you know, like they were pretty hyped. So I thought that it would do really, really well. And I was right. I was just way, way ahead of the game. Um, so when I first started, I was using influencers because back then I really didn't know much about Facebook ads. Uh, nor did I have the budget for them. So basically I just created one advertisement on Canva. It was literally just a picture of these AirPods and then it had some text on it that was like, you know, 50% off or whatever. I don't really know exactly. Maybe I'll throw up a picture if I can find that advertisement. Um, but yeah, so I basically ran that ad with like three influencer pages maybe, uh, maybe two, but I, I was not really using the right influencer accounts. Like back then, didn't really know what I was doing as far as picking influencers goes. And I was picking like these tech pages. And as some of you may know, tech pages just suck. They're awful. I really can't think of a single one um, that works. So really, that product would have done a lot better with meme pages. But back then, I didn't think meme pages would work. I don't, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, long story short, I literally just tested it with the wrong influencers and the wrong ad. And I didn't realize it at the time, uh, but that cost me so, so much money. And for some reason, I thought that the product didn't work. I was like, oh, well, you know, that's my mistake for not um, selling a like a proven product. And I just moved on to the next one. And that was so dumb of me um, because it's a product that could have worked. And I knew it could have worked, but I just wasn't trusting my gut. Um, and I think that there's definitely a point where you need to look at what the data says, but there's also a point when like, you know, what's going to work. Um, and it's just a matter of finding the right combinations of your advertisement and the right combinations of how you advertise it, et cetera, et cetera, um, to when you can actually make a product work. So I know damn well that I could have made like, it easily, easily six figures on AirPods if I had tested it with just meme pages or Facebook ads or at least had a better advertisement because I know my advertisement sucked. Right now, whenever I launch a product, I'm testing three creatives off the bat. Before I launch any interest, before I launch anything, I make three separate ads, well, or I hire someone to make three separate ads, and I split test all those together. And then 
In addition, I normally split test my ad copies and my thumbnails too. So it's super, super, super important to have a good advertisement going into it. And it's dumb to just waste money um, when you don't really know if it's your advertisement that sucks or your audience that sucks or anything like that. So definitely, definitely test multiple advertisements. And then I would also highly recommend if you are using influencers, definitely test a bunch of pages, a bunch of different types of pages. And um, if you are using Facebook ads, obviously test a ton of interest as well. So fast forwarding about a year now, it's December 2018 and I'm seeing Rose Bears. I saw them on like, I don't remember what page it was, but it was a big, big influencer page. Maybe it was like World Star or something. But I was like, holy crap, like if someone's advertising on this page and they gotta be making like mad, mad bank. So I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna start a store for it. So I did, I was like halfway through creating a store uh, to sell Rose Bears and then I just kept seeing ads. like. I, they kept popping up on my Instagram feed and I was like, you know what? This product is probably saturated. It's not a good, it's not a good idea to start selling it now. And then it just continued. Like I kept seeing it more and more and more and more and more. Meaning that product hadn't really reached its peak yet. This was still December. Remember and Valentine's day isn't until February. So I really could have had a month and a half to sell that product. Well, with shipping times, maybe like a solid month. Um, but still like I could have made so much money and that was an eight figure product. Like tons of people were making banks selling rose bears. And I really wish that I had just like, I had a, um, a more specific process in order to determine the competition of a product. And every product is different. And if it has a really big niche, like rose bears do, or it's like a trending product, like it's very general or like seasonal, stuff like that, those products tend to have really, really large markets and you can scale them and competition isn't really going to affect you as much. However, if it's like a very niche down product, then it definitely does hurt to have a lot of competition. But anyway, at that point in time, I hadn't really um, figured out a way to really determine the amount of competition that you have. Um, and that's super, super important. So I'm going to be sharing later on in this video how, the, how you can determine uh, the saturation of a product. But anyway, my biggest mistake there was just not trusting my gut again. Like I knew it was going to work. I knew it was a winning product. So it wasn't necessarily like the AirPods, but at the same time, I thought it was saturated. And you definitely don't want to sell a saturated product, but there are many occasions where it is not only okay, but it is like recommended. Um, especially if you're able to approach it in a way that's different than what your competition is doing. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, use the process that I'm about to talk about in order to determine the saturation of a product. And also like this process, like this is more for kind of niche products, um, stuff that's not really seasonal or trending or super broad. And with stuff that is seasonal or trending or super broad, there's so, so much money to be made. So unless you're getting in on a product like months and months and months and months, but like after it was really hot, then I would definitely still recommend trying to test it. One thing that I also want to say is that there are two products on the top of my mind that um, I quit. Like I started selling, I advertised and I just didn't make many or any sales with um, because I wasn't testing enough. Like I, I, probably put maybe like a hundred dollars into both of these products combined in order to test it. Now I'm putting like $500 minimum to test a product. Um, and I'm not saying that you should do that if you're a beginner, but if you have the budget, then definitely, definitely, um, test a product to that extent. But anyway, with those two products that I tested and failed and gave up on, um, my students, like two of my students are selling those products. Um, one is making three figures a day super consistently and one is making four figures a day super consistently. So that just goes to show you that um, you really, really have to test or someone else that is testing is going to take advantage of it and you're not. 
All right, so the way I determine the saturation of a product is I go to adspy.com and then I search up the product name. So like, for example, um, if you're selling purge mask, I would search up purge mask. I would search up Halloween mask. I would search up stitches mask. I would search up LED mask. Like just search up like a bunch of terms um, to try to find that product. And then once you do find that product, just sort by likes and just count how many ads have over a thousand likes. Cause if it has under a thousand likes, like it's really not making enough of an impact um, to like be considered competition, I guess. If it has like over a thousand likes and that lets you know that those are your like main competitors. Um, so you ideally wanna look for products that have between two and eight um, ads with over a thousand likes. And then some of those products may have like I don't know, 50,000 or like 100,000. Um, and that can be a red flag, but at the same time, it's not necessarily a red flag because people could just be running it with like worldwide targeting, engagement ads, stuff like that. And it costs them like, I don't know, 100 bucks to get that amount of likes. So that's not necessarily a red flag, but it's definitely something to look for. And uh, definitely look at the countries if you do find advertisements like that. But anyway, the reason why you want to have a minimum of two ads is because that kind of shows that it's a proven product. It shows that people are most likely making money from it. Um, and at that point, like it's an unsaturated product, I would consider. So there's a really, really high possibility that you can make a lot of money too um, if you hop in on that product. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't sell products that have over eight ads with over a thousand likes on them. Um, but it's definitely something where you need to like look at the market and think like, okay, is there, I don't know, 10 million buyers for this product? Or is there, I don't know, like 500 million buyers for this product? Like there's obviously a big difference there. And with trending products and seasonal products and stuff like that, um, they generally tend to have a, like a bigger market than just a smaller niche products. So like I mentioned earlier, you really need to spend at least $500 to effectively test a product. And you definitely need to be testing new advertisements, um, preferably new ad copies, new thumbnails, and just a ton of influencers or a ton of interest, um, whatever you're using. But if it's not like a proven product, meaning there's less than two ads with over a thousand likes on them, um, then it's very, very risky. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because more risk, more reward. Um, but you do need to keep in mind that you'll probably need to test more um, because you can't really model your competitors and see what works for them. Like the great part about ad spies, you can literally just watch someone's ad and then be like, okay, well, if that's working for them and they have 10,000 likes, then let me kind of recreate that style of advertisement and just run it with a similar audience. So another great part about ad spy is that you can see like their ages and their gender and just like everything, like it's super, super um, in depth. And I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate, but um, it's really, really great to look. So you do need to keep in mind that you'll probably need to spend more money testing if it is an unproven product. AdSpy is really, really expensive. It's like $150 a month, but they will give you like a free trial that gives you like a certain amount of views. So I definitely recommend that you sign up for that. And then um, just use it like sparingly. Like if you're not using it every day, um, then you're gonna be fine. And that free trial is actually going to last you a long time, hopefully to where you're making enough money that you can just pay for it and it's not really gonna matter. All right, so the last thing that I wanna say is that my biggest winning product right now, which is currently doing over five, well, it is currently doing five figures a day. Um, I tried testing this product two times in the past. I knew it was a winner, but I just could not get anything to hit. I could not get a lot of traction. And the ads that I were making were like break even at best. I was definitely losing money on a lot of them. And then two months ago, I saw someone else promoting the same product with a vastly different advertising style than I was doing. Um, my video ads were just like, they were just so traditional, I guess. I, I'm the, I obviously don't wanna to reveal too much about my product, but I just was not um, going about it in the same way. So I essentially mirrored their style of advertisement 
Um, I recorded all the videos myself. I did it the right way. And um, I was able to like, the first day I remember I launched that product, I was hitting like 15 ROASs. It was absolutely insane. And that product is still extremely profitable to this day. So that just goes to show you that with the right creative or the right targeting or just the right like mixture of both, um, then you can sell almost any product. And especially if it's a proven product or especially if you have like a strong gut feeling that a product is a winner, um, then there's a very, very big chance that you can sell it. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're able to learn from my mistakes and not miss out on close to a half a million dollars probably. Um, so yeah, I definitely hope that this helped you. And um, I hope that you just like got a ton of value out of it because that's really what I try to do in my videos. Um, I'm not out here trying to sell you a course or just trying to do anything except give you free value and um, just get straight to the point every single time. So if you appreciate that, if you enjoy that, then just do me a favor and hit that like, hit that subscribe button, uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>